Good morning, and welcome to worship at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Western Florida. My name is Jeremy, and I'm the DC at St. Paul. I know it looks like I'm getting ready for VBS this morning, but it's because I'm really excited about VBS this week. We're going to be live streaming each day this week from 9 to 9.30 a.m., Monday through Friday. This is a free opportunity to experience a little VBS together, since we can't all be together. We'll be singing some of my favorite songs, learning some great Bible studies, and uh, I think our friend Ed might even be online too. I hope to see you all there. But today we're here to worship, and Pastor Scott Henze will be leading us in our celebration of Trinity Sunday. Thanks to all those who have sent me selfies while worshiping. Keep those pictures coming. If you haven't sent us a picture yet, you can take a picture today, a selfie of you worshiping with those in your home. You can send those pictures to me at jbecker at stpaulweston.org. Pastor Scott's Bible class will premiere at 945 today after worship. There's a link to that video in the comments of this video. Or you can always access the Bible studies on our Bible study page at www.stpaulweston.com slash Bible study. We would love to know who's worshiping with us. So please take a moment to write in the chat or in the comment section of this video on YouTube. Or you can use the QR code here to go to stpaulweston.com slash card to fill out the digital connection card online. Phase one opening for us at St. Paul starts this week with short communion services outside in the breezeway. There are times available this Tuesday, June 9th in the morning and evening. You can access that sign up by using the QR code shown here, or you can go to our website. In our prayers today, Melinda Batani asked for prayers for her friends Carol and Karen, who are having health issues. The Biondo family requests prayers for Catherine, who's an eight-year-old girl who was hit by a car in Tallahassee. She's in ICU with brain swelling. Catherine is the goddaughter of their son's girlfriend. Ann and Joe Crockett asked for prayers for friend Kim, who is battling cancer and making some difficult decisions over the next few weeks. Aaron Clemmer asked for prayers for a close friend Jonathan, who is battling extremely aggressive brain tumor. We pray for Miranda Thomas, daughter of Tom and Cynthia Thomas. She will be having surgery at Nicholas Children's Hospital this week and is expected to be in the hospital recovering for about five days. Chris Pasco requests prayers for her sister-in-law, Susan, who is recovering after being hospitalized. We pray for Bob Brown as he is being beginning radiation treatments. We continue to pray for hope for those who have experienced economic instability due to COVID-19. We pray for the family of Chris Niedabitz, friend of the Henzies, who passed away last Wednesday. Chris was father to six-year-old Mark, eight-year-old Lily, husband to wife Lauren, and pastor at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Giddings, Texas.
Good morning. Welcome to Holy Trinity Sunday, the day we come and we celebrate, set aside a particular day to where we recognize that we don't worship many gods, but one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit revealed in the three persons. Today is the one day in the church year that we do that other creed, not the Nicene, not the Apostles, but the Athanasian Creed. It's a long creed, and as you go through the service today, it's a, a great doctrine of, of who we believe in, what we confess as our faith in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's broken up in responsive parts uh, for you to join in. Today, today we come to worship. We come to worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I invite you today to rest your hearts and your minds, to settle yourselves and come. Come before the Lord to sing praises to him and to give him all of our worship. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are gathered to celebrate and embrace God, our Father, who created us, his Son, who poured out his life to save us, and the Holy Spirit, who works in and with us to open the door of faith. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Open, Open our, our hearts, hearts to your power and guidance. Filled with the Holy Spirit's power, we come before our great God, admitting we sin in thought, word, and deed as we betray the Spirit's gift to us. Father, we, we confess that many times we live spiritually empty lives and ignore your Spirit's power. You call, gather, strengthen, enlighten, and comfort us, and yet we fail to embrace these blessings. Rekindle in us the flame of your Spirit. Breathe on us your life-giving Spirit, and empower our lives for your service. In the church, the Spirit daily and richly forgives the sins of those who repent and believe the gospel. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was without form and devoid, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse, and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good, and God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind, and on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds and it was so and god made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind and god saw that it was good then god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth 
and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth and every tree will seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle is from Acts, chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Out of respect for Jesus and his word, I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, O Christ. Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace I bring you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. You know, there's a difference between power and authority. If you have authority but no power... Your authority is absolutely useless. Let me explain it like this. A government man was taking geological readings for the Department of the Interior. And he approached one farmer who he was supposed to survey and he said, I have been authorized by the United States government to go out into your pasture and to take some readings. Do you mind if I do that? To which this farmer said, you can't go out in my pasture. Well, this government man became a little perturbed, and he brought out a piece of paper. And he showed him that it was signed by the Secretary of the Interior, and it gave him the authority to take those readings any way that he chose. He showed it to the farmer, and he said, There, you see, I have the authority to go into your pasture. As the government man started climbing over the fence, the farmer said, I'll tell you one more time. You better not go into my pasture. The government man arrived in the middle of the pasture, sneering and laughing as he started setting up his equipment when all of a sudden the ground started to shake around him. He looked up and he saw a very big, mean bull running toward him with his head down. The government man forgot all of his equipment. He started running towards the fence just as fast as he could, and he cried out to the farmer, Help me! Help me! The farmer said, Hey, why don't you show him your papers? <laughs> he had the authority, but he didn't have the power to be in that field. Jesus has clearly given us both the authority and the power in the Holy Spirit. All authority, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth, not only in the past, but also in the future, not only in eternity, but in the nasty, virus filled, protest marching world right now. Jesus is in charge today, and therefore his great commission to the church, to you and to me, is absolutely valid. We are to go. So in the words of Martin Luther, what does this mean? What exactly is the great commission of the church? If we read in chapter 28, verse 19, we read that Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you that if Jesus is not raised from the dead, if he really didn't live and die and become resurrected, then this commission is absolutely meaningless. The very meaning of the word commission is to be authorized to perform certain duties or to take certain powers. And what Jesus did in his resurrection is absolutely that power. And it's been given to him through all authority. And he 
has given us marching orders. It's found all throughout God's word. So this morning, I want us to look at the four elements that come with this great commission that Jesus gives us. One, go. Two, make disciples. Three, baptize. And four, teach them to obey. So go. In the Greek text, this participle go carries the power of a command. To go means that we're not supposed to wait for people to come to us. Hello. <laughs> we're to go to them. Jesus wants his disciples, you and me, to be on the offense, not on the defense. And this going is all about how we make disciples. In our weekly adult Bible study, we are journeying our way through the book of Acts. From the beginning of the book to the very end, the disciples went. They go to the very ends of the earth, to the people and the places, to preach the gospel. In any language, go means the opposite of Stay. It doesn't mean don't go. It means get up and go. Don't stay. We're to make disciples wherever God has placed us. And it's not just the responsibility of me, your pastor. It's not just the responsibility of Jeremy, our DCE, who can do everything. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to worship with you today through the gifting of his going for us. It's not provided in going just through the staff or the leaders, but for every single one of us. We are the go between the living God and the dying people. We are the go. Our commission is literally to preach the gospel to those we come in contact with. It's our sinful self that says, I can't go. It's our sinful self that says, I'm no good at it. It's our sinful self that says, I don't know how. It's our sinful self that says, I'm too old or I'm too young. It's our sinful self that says, I don't know what to say or I don't know anyone to share the good news with. Stop with the I can'ts. And start with simply believing in God and going because he can. Do you know what that looks like? That's the lady that's behind the counter at the Publix that you've seen a million times before but never really ever addressed her. But now you can simply say, God bless you. And just see where the conversation takes you. Believing in God and going. Do you know what that looks like? That might be the person that you come in contact with at work that you haven't seen in over two months because you've been socially distanced from them. And then you do what you've always done. You ask the question, how are you? And instead of the reply that you've heard for the last five years, they tell you, I'm not good. And then you spend some time listening and maybe praying with them. Believing in God and going. Do you know what that looks like? That means you disciple by teaching your children and your family and your friends what Paul was talking about in Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 when he said, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ. Not black, not white, but one in Christ. Hatred and division and racism has to end. You see, it's really simple. To make a disciple means you have to know someone. And to know someone means you have to actually talk to someone. And to talk to someone means that you know that you not only have the authority and the power to do so, but the command of God to do so. So let's start building some relationships. We are commissioned to go. If we're not allowed to go physically right now and preach the gospel, then we go online right now and preach the gospel. We go, we go. That's the first element of this commission of the church to go. And the second is this is to make disciples. 
Make disciples is the key verb in this imperative commission that we've been given. Who is a disciple? Jesus defines exactly who that is in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 and 24, when he says, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. As Luther says, what does this mean? It means that a disciple is one who is willing to take up his cross to deny himself, to forgive others and follow Jesus no matter what that might be or no matter where that might lead you. Bearing our cross daily means that we learn to forgive. Dear God, dear God, please forgive us and our hatred in this country. Denying ourselves means we deny our selfish desires and we learn to be content with what we have. Following Jesus means we go to people and places we aren't even aware of and become the hands and feet of Christ to the people he's already ordained us and arranged for us to meet. There are no coincidences in life. Don't ever forget that. They are just divine appointments of God. So are we making disciples of this nature in our church? Are we the ones who have learned to forgive our enemies? Are we the ones who have learned to conquer our selfishness? The ones who follow Jesus wherever he may lead? I pray we are, and we continue to do so. The third element of this commission is to baptize. Baptize literally brings cleansing from sin and from its power. Baptism literally brings faith through the Holy Spirit. Baptism literally brings life to dead people and forgiveness of sins through a resurrected Christ. A Holy Spirit-filled life in Christ. You see, baptism points us back to the work of God and forward to the life of faith. To go. To go. To what? To go. The final portion of this command is found in verse 20. And that is teaching the disciples to observe all that Jesus commanded. You know, just because you're baptized, just because you sit in a well, not pew, I can't say that, in your couch, in your chair, does not mean you're a disciple. Disciples need to be taught all that Christ has commanded and to observe it, which means to obey what is taught to them. In the church, we don't merely inform the minds of God's people. We teach and train them to obey the words of Christ. When we become disciples, we who are baptized, our life is meant to be different Paul told us in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. It's right there. You see it? It's hanging on the banner in the back of our church sanctuary. How serious is St. Paul Weston about the Great Commission? The Great Commission commission and command of God is not an option. It is a commandment. It's been said the church doesn't change the world by making converts, but by making disciples. That is our call. Working it out through the Holy Spirit's power that's within us as we make disciples. It's the Holy Spirit who calls. It's the Holy Spirit who gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole church and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. The church is a place where we daily experience the forgiveness of sins and where we are discipled to go and make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. People who live out their faith in Christ and the joy of the risen Christ. That's who we are called to be. We are called to fulfill the commission of the church. May St. Paul continue in the ministry, in the mission of making more and better disciples for Christ. The commission of the church is a great command that carries a great, great promise. And the promise is what Jesus said to you and to me in verse 20. And I am with you always, he said, to the end of the age. He is in charge of the universe. Jesus is the one who empowers his church with the Holy Spirit to fulfill this commission. To go, to go, to go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Now may the peace that passes all of our understanding guard our hearts and minds and keep them rooted in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Today, again, we make our confession of faith in the words of the Athanasian Creed. If this is new to you, let me uh, give you some brief history and the understanding of some of the terminology. When we make our confession and we say the Catholic faith, the word Catholic is universal. It means one universal church. It's not talking about a denomination as the Catholic church. It's talking about a universal church. Let's come together and let's confess our faith today. Today we are marveling at the grace of God and paying attention to us and saving us, although we are seemingly insignificant part of his creation. The grace of God is also apparent as the church has sought to confess the witness of Scripture. As we cannot comprehend the vastness of space, so we cannot understand God's nature as three persons in one Godhead. As you profess truths about our majestic God, I will follow with the offsetting realities that also must be true. We cannot explain God. We can only confess our faith within the limits of human understanding. Let's confess our faith in the Athanasian Creed. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will without doubt perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. Neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet, there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. And yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet, there are not three Lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or Lords. The Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. proceeding. Thus, there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another. None is greater or less than another, but the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith to believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. 
He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age, perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. Who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. We come before the Lord at this time to lift up our prayer concerns for the church and the prayers of the church. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and your response will be, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, our creator and redeemer, we praise your name and all your works of your creation, but especially for your work of the redemption of the whole world through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Guide and govern your church throughout the world that your righteousness may come to the salvation of all. Lead us in the way of truth that we confess together the unity of faith before the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To all ministries of the gospel and the congregations committed to their care, grant the unity of your grace that they reflect your own image of mercy, grace, and unity, and please you in all things. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Though there are many divisions between people in this sinful world, have mercy on all who are in government and law. Father, work to establish and preserve order, protecting the weak, and foster godly virtue. Bless our president, our governor, and all who make and administer all the laws and judge over them. Deliver the world from the threats of the pandemic and tyranny and preserve the nation in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your servants that commit to serving the children of this church, St. Paul. Today we lift up all those teachers, Melinda, Jody, Mary, Liz, Cheryl, Katrina, Claire, Lisa, Dorothy, Lola, Natalia, Wendy, and Karen. Father, we thank you for the gifts you've instilled in them to teach your children. Continue to bless them and bless the fruits of their labor as they teach and train disciples. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Help us by our reconciliation with you also to be reconciled with one another that forgiveness and love prevail in our marriages, in our families, in our neighborhoods, and especially as faithful disciples of Jesus in the church and our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of mercy, you have revealed your will that all should come to the knowledge of truth and be saved. In unity also with all those who have gone before us in saving faith, strengthen in us that living hope of the resurrection and the life of the world to come, that we live in faith and joy. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. At this time, we come before our Lord to give back what he has already given to us in our tithes and our offering. We thank you for continuing to make your contributions and your tithe to the church. If you're mailing in your envelopes, continue to do so. You can also sign up in our new Streamline online giving, and there's a video that can show you more about that. Let us go before the Lord and thank him for the gifts he's given to us. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. 
as you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand for our closing and for uh, a blessing. Well, you ready? You ready? It's time to go. It's over. This time, this time of discipling, this time of teaching, this time of worship and sharing, this time of singing praises is but over until we convene again. But in the meantime, in the middle, between each weekend is the go. Let's go. Let's go and develop relationships Let's go to the heart of people. Let's go and pray. Let's go and ask. Let's go and share so that all people can come to the knowledge of the truth. Let's go. Let's go be disciples of Christ. And in that journey, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Jesus, you lead us. Now we go as disciples, disciples making disciples. disciples. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I'd like to thank you for worshiping with us today at St. Paul. Our hope and prayer is that you had a chance today to see Christ in a very personal and a very real way. If you're struggling right now, if you have friends or family or know someone that's in need of prayer and you'd like to go before the Lord, please call us. We'd like to know. You can either send us an email to the church office or give us a call. 
we uh, want to be here for you. We want to pray for you. And the joys that we have, we celebrate the joys of a new opportunity for us to come together and to celebrate the sacrament. More information is going to be coming out about that, and I'm really excited to be able to come together again to celebrate around the sacrament of our Lord's Supper. I invite you to come and sign up to be involved in that. And also look for more information as we begin to come together in our phasing of a congregation coming together here at St. Paul to worship. Have a blessed week, and may God continue to guide you as you go and make disciples. Take care.